it might be a good idea if you could do that, please. Yeah, so it, it's not the sort of thing that you can chuck a bunch of uh, ingredients into a pan and hope it's all going to come out. You need to be very, very precise um, about this. So <clears throat> if you fail to plan, as the adage goes, you are planning to fail. Uh, beer is absolute, the beer making process is absolutely no exception. OK, so moving on to the importance of planning. OK, from a leadership perspective, um, Stephen Covey who wrote the seven, well, wrote many things, including the seven habits of highly effective people. Uh, he had a whole section which was start start with the end in mind. So obviously, whether this relates to uh, from like an agile perspective, it's all about getting the your acceptance criteria determined. I suppose what do you actually want to end up with at the end of the process here? So you can actually work out what your definition of ready is for your ticket, um, but more specifically, the actual definition of done. So why, you know, like if we're going to be making a plan, you know, around a beer here, and we go into so much detail, it is amazing why more people don't do this with, with their lives. So we go along sort of ha haphazardly, uh, you know, we 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 wake up, we brush our teeth, we stroll. We used to stroll into the office. Maybe some of us still do. Uh, we do the nine to five. Excuse me. <coughs> we we do the nine to five. Uh, we go home again. We watch a bit of TV. We go off to sleep and we rinse and repeat. And we keep going. And we you know we don't actually stop to think about what what our end result is that, we're, that we actually are wanting. You know, what do you want out of your life? Why not put it down on a bit of paper and actually start to make some plans to be able to get that? Uh, I think, you know, obviously Einstein Einstein sort of said it best, I think, you know, he says if you keep doing the same thing, you know, the definition of badness, keep doing the same thing and expect a different result. Well, maybe it's maybe all of us should, should take a bit more time to actually just slow, slow down a little bit and work out what it is that we actually want. Write it down and make a plan to actually... Uh, take steps towards getting that. So I don't know. I mean, I, I, you know, is it a bad education? You know, that we got at the end of the day that we don't actually think about this stuff, or like maybe not. There's only a very small percentage of people who actually think like that, and it's my provocation that those people are possibly some of the more successful people in lives. In lives, that sounded a bit spooky. In life, even. <laughs> OK, moving on to the uh, the beautification process. So we start off with a bunch of tasty grain, uh, which has been uh, it's been left to germinate a little bit. So the grain has st started to germinate, which means that it's full. It's full of sugar. And normally that's when uh, they're, they're, there's a bit of a toasting process that goes on or they roast it to try and stop stop that process. Uh, from proceeding any further before it goes out to the breweries, at which point we can do things like mill it, which means we take the grain and we can start to grind it down into the right size little pieces of grain so we can get in to what's known as the endosperm in there, uh, which is the car carbohydrate sugars that we need to extract to be able to start the fermentation process. So what we do is we mill it and then we put it into what's known as the mash tun. And the mash tun is nothing more than just a big, a big vessel, a big waterproof vessel that's got water at a very, very specific temperature that we mix up all this cracked grain in to produce what's known as the wort. So this is a very, it's a sugary liquid <clears throat> uh, that, that comes out the other end. So what are the parallels here? Uh, well, we need to get uh, the environment for making beer, the environment has got to be controlled uh, to a greater or a lesser degree. So it's all about getting ju just the right environment to be able to promote success. So it's all about, you know, consistency in getting the, si the, the, the milling size of the grain, the, the temperature, the timing that the grain is actually in the water so my my question to you is, are you actually deliberately controlling your environment to try and promote your success? As in, are you 
immersing yourselves in specific environments where you'll be able to give yourself uh, um, a bit of a slight edge, you know, in moving forward towards achieving your goals. If you're not doing this deliberately, then you're far more susceptible to negativity from roundabout, uh, which may hinder you or, or may even prevent you from actually achieving your goals. So you need to be very careful about what, what environments you place yourself in um, such that you, you can control the stuff that you actually listen to because unconsciously you will be processing it all, uh, which can be a good thing and may not be if you're listening to the wrong stuff. Okay, so we've left it in the mash tun. All of the sugars have now come out into the water. So we're gonna have to, because we are Scottish here, we've got this thing called sparging and sparging the wort. What this means is that when we drain away that sugary water from the mash tun, there's still sugars that are left, that residual sugars that we may have missed. So what we do is we get hot water and we put it over the grain again and we let it we let it drain on through essentially this is a scottish thing we want to get our money's worth and we're going to get all that sugar out of the grain okay so this is called this process is called sparging so it's all about um again putting yourself in that environment where you're hearing consistent messages so for instance if you're in like a mentorship environment which, which i would highly recommend maybe you know you seek out um you're going to be hearing the same success factors over and over and over again and what habits you should have been doing and measuring yourself on over and over and over you're going to get the most value out of those words by letting them wash over you on multiple occasions so you're protecting your inner voice as well, which of course never ever shuts up and tells you that you can't do things if, if you immerse yourself in environments that tell you that you can. Okay, so it's all about con continuous learning, uh, the analogy with sparging here, um, education, knowledge, let, let, let it wash over you. Spend your lifetime in the process of continual learning. It's also like another um, common factor amongst very successful people. What this also does, if you are continuously immersing yourself in the positive stuff at the end of the day, this has a wonderful effect on the growth of your own self image. So the image of what you think about you, everybody can do with um, improving the words that we, that we say to ourselves. So this is another really good way and a good habit to put yourselves in those environments where you are co constantly building building yourself up and building other people up. Um, like if you can't help to build, build somebody else up, then what are you doing? I mean, if, it, it, um, if they're a complete moron, that's fine. But if not, wouldn't the world be a better place? Like if we can just spend the majority of our day building other people up, empowering them, encouraging them. Anyway. So we're going to move on to the next part of the process, uh, which is about where we turn the heat up. So we've got the boil. So this, this is an interesting part of the process. It's where we put in some of our, of our flavorings. So we've got down the bottom left hand side there, we've got uh, a vine. Uh, and those, in case you don't recognize them, are actually what hops are. So we put in all, all of our flavorings to different types of hops, and then we turn the heat up on the residual mixture. So we are boiling at this point. The whole mixture ha has to go through this aggressive, uh, most energetic and dangerous volatile stage. Now, what happens as a result of all, all of this energy, the actual chemical constitution of the beer changes and it has to change for the fermenting the fermentation process and the, and the success in the resulting beer if you don't go through this high high energy and volatility making lots and lots of mistakes boil away add some more tweak it a little bit you will not get the result that you're actually after so this is all about um helping to uh, work, working systems, like as you are working 
um, as you are um, en energetically working towards a goal, it's really important that you try and focus on the systems as you go along. Work, work those systems. Uh, making just li little changes as you go. Keep working the system, keep working the system, keep working the system until you finally come out with the product that you're actually after. It's really important, though, that you're not discouraged by the level of activity that you may need to have to put in to be able to get the result that you know that you're actually after. And uh, if you are working with uh, with a mentor, uh, this is the only way that uh, the the mentor is going to be of use to you, because if you're not moving, it's it's very difficult to steer a parked car, so to speak. So. You have got yourself a mentor, right? I'm looking at you out there, by the way. I'm talking to you. You're listening. If you're not got a mentor, really, really have a think about it. It can change your life with regards to getting your goals, your work, your life balance, all the rest of that stuff. And I'll be coming back to check on you to make sure that you've got one by the end of this session. You're listening? Good. All right, we'll move on. <laughs> OK, so um, as part of this very, very um, energetic process, uh, as I say, the, the chemical constitution of that boiling uh, tub of wort changes. And what happens as a result of the chemical change <clears throat> is that you get what's known as flocculants. Can, can anybody, if you've got a problem with flocculants in your life, can you just put your hand up, please? No? Is it just me again? I can't believe it. OK. Anyway, as a result of doing this, the flocculants is all the scum that rises to the top of the boil. Now, this is co coagulated proteins all and all sorts of nasty stuff, which if they are left in the proximity of your beer, they will make it go off. They will spoil the end result that you're actually after. So I'm wondering, you're working on some goals just now. What flocculants do you have in your life there? Now, keep in mind, this uh, this was quite scary when somebody first said this to me. You are the product of the five people that you associate with the most. You are the product of the five people that you associate with the most. Have a think about that. I'm talking about the way that you think will be the product of the five people that you associate with most. Are you mixing with the right people? You'll be thinking the same way. Your financial results will be about the same. So just have a think about that. If you are speaking more to five more select individuals, your results are very, very likely to change. And maybe, you know, your brother-in-law around the dinner table or whatever has got his opinion on what you should or should not be doing. I don't know. Just think about the word flocculence next time you listen to some of the rubbish that comes out of his mouth. <laughs> OK, so. Uh, what we got? Yeah, OK, so I think we're I think we're moving on. Next part of the process, if you don't get rid of that flo that flocculence, uh, then you're stuffed. If you do get rid of the flocculence, you end up with this magical substance which is ready to be fermented. So that's all about putting uh, yeast into that nice sugary flavoursome liquid that we just created. that has got no alcohol in it whatsoever such that the yeast can take all the sugars and turn them into uh, that magical substance alcohol, which some of you may read about. So much of the hard work has actually been done by this, but you need to, whilst you're waiting for the, the results, you're working away, it's all about creating like a, a sterile environment to a certain extent. So an environment free, free from negativity or reducing the negativity to a minimum. Uh, such that you, the, the product that you are trying to make can, can continue to develop. So you're working at it, you're not listening to negativity, you're not exposing yourself deliberately to environments where you're going to have all this negativity, um, to, let, to let the actual product cut, come to fruition. This is a, uh, this is a point which, which, which you cannot rush. So it will happen and you, you'll go basically when the time is right on this. Uh, having, having a mentor to help you make any of the decisions right about then, of course, is really important. 
So you can, you cannot rush it. This is a point of um, patience. You know, the creating the right the right conditions, and the result will follow. As long as you're following a plan and you're being tutored and mentored as you go along, very important. Don't don't judge too soon. You know, depending on the size of your goal, you know, the analogy I like to think of is if you've got a bucket of water or whatever, and you you put one one squeeze of food coloring uh, into that bucket and get you know give it a mix, can you see the result? Of course not. But if you keep doing that consistently, then over time, you're absolutely guaranteed that the color of that water is going to change. So be be patient, fo follow a process, and don't and don't be discouraged too early. If you've got the right environment round about you, it doesn't matter if you fall down, you're going to get back up again because you are goal focused. So this is all about. You know, watching the trends, you know, as well is uh, is another thing whilst you are being patient. And uh, yeah, just make sure that, you know, that you're keeping in contact with that mentor. Then, then we come to the final bit uh, when you're just starting to make uh, homebrew, which is all about bottling. So we've got the bottling process. Uh, this is tedious. You've got all these bottles. You need to clean them all. Ideally speaking, you need to put them into the dishwasher. If not, you've got to get chemicals, brushes to get inside the bottles, clean them up. It's just a nightmare. It's very, very repetitive, um, but it's a really, really good habit that you really need to get into if you want to get consistent results. If you don't put in the <clears throat> the habits and the and the patience with getting this bit right, then even though you've got a fantastic product, nearly it will never ever ferment in those bottles. It'll go off. So that's just rubbish. So you need to maintain good good habits on that one. Pay attention, slow and steady. Make sure that you create the right environment for the for the magic to happen there. Um, You've always got to think like when you're getting into all these repetitive habits, it is, of course, important to think, can we be more like effective, more efficient, perhaps in the process? And when you're making beer, uh, trust me, after you've been through a few years of using the bottles, you find out about these things. You get angry, you think differently and you get organized. Enter kegging stage right. So this is all about. Forget all those bottles. You've got one great big 20, uh, 19 liter bottle, uh, which of course make, you've got to only clean one vessel. You can get your whole hand inside it to be able to clean it. You do have to spend a bit more money, but it's far, far, far easier to be able to get a more predictable result. So keep thinking, take advice on it. Ask people that have actually done it already. Oh yeah, that would be a mentor. Don't worry, I'm going to be coming back to you to ask you if you've got your mentor sorted out yet, by the way. I haven't forgotten. OK, so it's all about getting efficient, getting effective and uh, thinking a little bit, thinking a little bit differently there. So just wrapping up here, um, what is the real secret here that I'm getting to and the, pa the parallels between this magical beer thing and leadership? Uh, as with anything at work and especially in your own personal life, it's it's all about mentorship. I've been banging on about it for so long. Now, what is a mentor? Like a mentor is ideally speaking somebody who has actually got the result that you want. So these are people uh, who have gone through the hard yards. Um, and from from my own per personal experience, I know a few mentors, and that is. It is amazing how few times they have ever, ever, ever been asked to help or if they would mind guiding an individual, whether it be on on like a personal mission. Personal missions are far more interesting in my in my humble opinion uh, than the corporate ones. But um, there's not, no, nobody actually asks these successful people, would you mind giving me some guidance on this? So see what you can do. See if you can find one that's actually got the result that you want. Listen to what they've got to say. Do what they say and go back to them and tell them that you have listened to what they've done. You have done what they have done and these are the results and what the next steps are. Uh, that way they will know that you are worth their time because they don't know that up until that point. Okay, so get yourself a mentor. 
continuous pursuit of knowledge. There's a couple of books there that I found uh, pretty pretty useful. If you read enough, read to lead, by the way, if you read enough of these sort of books, then you can start reading more interesting books like those ones that have just popped down there, uh, which are far, far more interesting. Learning how to start your own brewery, for you know, for example, if that's something that might be of interest to you. Um, Theodore Giesel. OK, now this is where the prize is going to be. If anybody can tell me what Theodore Giesel's other name was, that was his real name, but when he actually wrote some books, he used another name and he said the most destructive thing people uh, smart destructive things smart people do is spend their lives waiting even people with lofty dreams and aspirations get distracted by the inertia of ordinary events and subconsciously store their lives in the waiting place as he calls it okay so i'll give you a small clue here oh the places you'll go and i deliberately skipped on so you can tell me who Theodore Giesel is. Pop, pop, your, pop it down into the chat. Um, thank you very much for listening. I popped down the uh, Meetup Madness uh, URL at the bottom there, webinar, singular, meetupmadness.io. If you want to check out some of the scheduled events we've got, or as I say, fo follow us on Twitter at Meetup Madness, that'd be good. Thank you very much, guys. Um, right, so I think we've come to that. H have we come to that exciting bit in the proceedings? Uh, Nick, where we need to give away 25 million points? Oops. Well, maybe. First off, I have a pile of questions that have suddenly started appearing oh, all okay. in the last few seconds. Nice. And of course, there is the answer to the, your question. Yep. But let's do the questions first. We'll make everyone sweat. Yep. Um, yep. So uh, Manish has success. Does it have a set definition? Can one define success for others? Success for some, maybe failure for others. Yeah, yeah. So this is that's a really, really good question, Manish. Um, the way that uh, I uh, I have I've been introduced to the concept of success is by my my mentor saying a really, really annoying thing to me. And what he said was that he's got magical powers, and uh, if if he chooses, he's going to put one trillion dollars into my bank account overnight. And he said, if I choose to do this and you wake up tomorrow and see that in your bank account, what are you going to do? And uh, he, he gave me a hint that I may actually just want to drop him a quick text just to say thanks very much, big boy. Um, but he said, what are you going to do? And the whole concept, if you've got a trillion dollars in your bank account, um, you're, you're not going to be able to spend that. So people are going to say, all right, I want a nice car, I want a house, I want a castle, uh, yeah, I want a fluffy something or other. You, you've still got a trillion dollars in your bank account. So what, what is it that you really want? If you can come back to me, by the way, you, you can find me on LinkedIn. If you can... And if you've got an answer for that, uh, that I can't say, you know, like sort of, so what, the end of it all, you know, really, really work into your values. What, what is it that you want? That, you know, if you had all the time and all the money in the world, then what would you want? So my mentor never, ever told me what success was. He showed me a mirror and he asked me to have a think about what success was by asking me that trillion dollar question. So I hope that everybody here does the same on that because it's a really interesting and really annoying exercise. Some of you might know immediately. Others will go, well, I just come into work at nine o'clock and I would challenge you. Would you come in maybe at 9.30 if you got a trillion dollars? What else would you like to do? Anyway, have a think about it. Good question. <laughs> if I can, I'll throw in an additional response to that question because yep. I've been challenged on that recently. Oh yeah. And it is, when you figure out what success is, try and measure it and keep track of your being whether you're being more or less successful as time goes on. Actually establish some sort of metric. How are you doing on your success track? So some some people, um, I think, may, maybe may, make the mistakes of uh, 
measuring the, the wrong things. So maybe I would challenge you and, and be, be driven by your mentor on this one and ask what habits do I need to develop to be able to take me to my goal and then measure the habits that you are doing. I hope that I hope that makes sense. So make sure that you're measuring the right thing and be asked what you know what the right thing might be from somebody who's already got the result that you want would be my advice on that one. Um, there's a very interesting comment. Well, next comment from Peggy Lou. I think she's referring to the uh, um, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Uh, I think she said, or you are the average of the five beers you drink the most. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> I'll drink to that one. I wish I had a beer with me. There we go. <laughs> this is uh, the next a, one, right? <laughs> yeah. There's a lovely comment here from Alison. Uh, while I was a kid, I used to bottle beer with my dad. Because I loved all things sweet, I used to put in double the sugar when dad wasn't looking. Uh -uh. It ended with a lot of exploded <laughs> bottle tips. Uh, is there a leadership lesson in this analogy? Perhaps okay. something about self-sabotage and making sure you do the right things once you know the right things. I think you already know the answer to that one and the word rhetorical may spring to mind. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I've got another um, integral part of the process that can make it far, far more, far more um, warming, warming of the soul, and that is uh, my golden retriever. Of course, is called Charlie, and uh, I found out it's generally quite a messy process if you're doing bottling. There's always beer that ends up on the floor, but miraculously, with my dog around, I never ever had to get the mop out once. And he was always he was always my best friend and seemed to be encouraging me to make more and more and more beer. I can never understand it myself. Anyway, if you've got a dog, they absolutely love it. Trust me. <laughs> OK, uh, and then we have lots of answers for Dr. Zeus. Ah, uh, you know, Theodore Giesel, yes. Yes. <laughs> That's oh, oh, the places you'll go. If Emmy's got kids, by the way, if you're not reading that book, to yourself and to your kids at the same time. You're, you're doing yourself and your kids a disservice. I would so, so recommend that you have a look at it. It was the very last book that Theodore Giesel wrote and it's just awesome. And it's all about goal setting and it's about your, your inner voice and the words that you say to yourself. And it's all about perseverance. I don't think it mentions beer um, maybe maybe his next book would have been about that if he'd um, if he still kicked around. But you definitely need to read that one. Okay. And uh, did you want to pick one of the Doctor Zeus winners? Uh, where Since are we? We, well, look, we've got four people who've guessed Doctor Zeus. So I was going to say pick a number, one to four. Oh, so it has to be my lucky number. Three. Uh, which is, oh, I hope I can say this correctly, Andreja Andre. uh, Milankovic. Milankovic. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Well done. Right. Round of applause from everybody else. Yeah. So you got 25 million points. That's amazing. Uh, 25,000. Uh, 25 million points. Most million, more. million dollars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They are Zimbabwean points, or actually they are Telstra plus points. Or maybe Serbian. Yeah. Next but, time um, you find yourself in Harare, you'll be able to get yourself a, yeah. I don't know, a peanut butter sandwich or something. I don't know. It'd be very nice. Yeah. Go, go and have a look at the website. In we had a billion dinners. Yeah. <laughs> go on the flight of angels. Go on the flight of angels over the Victoria Falls if you're there as well. It's spectacular. Thank you. OK, um, we have another question. Uh, can a not so successful person be a good mentor? Can a not so successful person? I think that's uh, there's an issue with what you're actually telling yourself in that case. I would um, I would suspect that you probably have I've learned a lot of um, a lot of stories in your life. You've received a few knocks in your life. And what, what I would uh, recommend that you probably do just to prepare for this, I think that you, that you can potentially be a good mentor. 
or at least to start somebody along the right tracks is just to maybe um, learn learn the art of, in fact, everybody can do this, learn the art of structured question, uh, questions. So by, by that, I mean being able to do things like, um, what, why is that important? First question. Why is that important to you? Sounds like the same question, but it's from a different perspective. You're asking that individual person, you know, what would be, uh, what, why should we do that? Third question, why should we do that now? And the final question, what would happen if we did not do that? So why do I say those five questions? If you, somebody is asking you for, for some guidance or you feel they need some guidance, maybe getting them to ask themselves those five questions and see, it, see if they know the answer to them because that, that may help to guide them on their next step. If you've got clarity around what you want, then uh, you're, you know, you are, you're a good way down the track. To, act, to actually getting it. Hope, I hope that helps. Everybody should be practicing those five questions and using them every day of life. People think at work, they want this, they want that, they want the next thing. If you can ask them those five questions, you're going to arm yourself with a whole bunch more information to be able to deliver a better product or the person who's made the request will go away with their tail between their legs because clearly they don't know all that information and they should before they come to you. So I hope that answered your question. If you learn the structured art of questions, questioning, if I can put it that way, then yes, a, a, a less successful person can certainly help people in a mentorship capacity. Uh, another question from Ankit. Uh, what things to look for when you are finding your mentor? And what are the potential barriers uh, when you are finding one? So I was I, um, I was really quite lucky because I was actually f found by a mentor. <laughs> mm -hmm. <clears throat> As in, uh, he, he introduced himself to, to me, which got me very, very suspicious, wondering what on earth is it all about? Um, so when, when you are looking for a mentor, I would just have a think about the, the result that you want and see, uh, ask people, you know, do you know somebody who, ha who ha has got this result? Is there somebody who has got the same, the same lifestyle that you are interested in? Another thing, if you do find these people, then asking questions around um, how, how uh, if you don't mind me asking, and I'm not meaning to be rude, but how do, um, how do you make your money? Do you trade time for cash? Or do you have more asset-based income? That's, that's a really, really important one because if you've got somebody who is just caning themselves to death, but they've got, I don't know, they've got 300 grand a year, 400 grand a year or whatever, you don't necessarily want to be taking your advice from them unless you've got the same energy levels they do. You want to be seeking out people that have got, got more asset-based income, which means that they need to have been working very hard for a finite amount of time to be able to produce a cash flow. So the question is here, do you want to have a million dollars in the bank or $10 million in the bank? When you think about, you know, success and all the rest, it's cash in the bank, right? I would suggest otherwise. Do you want $10 million in the bank or do you want to learn how to produce 100 and, I don't know, 150 grand's worth of cash flow per year linked to inflation for the rest of your life. How good are you with delayed gratification? That's, that's the difference. You, you need to start thinking like that. How can I produce cash flows that, that will progressively become independent of me? So being able to find somebody that has experience doing that, they are out there, definitely. They are out there. You just need to ask ask people who's who has got who's got this sort of result. Who has been running? Who's been running businesses? Who spends most of the life on the golf course? Uh, you know, on holiday. Who's got an awful lot of time for their kids? 
and see if you can network your way on through uh, would be my suggestion. Another follow-up question or similar question from Peggy Lou. How do you know if someone is the right mentor for you? That's that's a very good question. I think uh, we, you know, we are all reasonably skeptical to start with, but when you find out, you know, a, a good mentor. I've been I've been uh, very very lucky um, with my lo long suffering mentor. <laughs> um, you will you will know instinctively uh, if they are providing you with time and energy and advice and are not expecting anything in return. I mean, that would be a good indicator, you know, for example. Or if they are offering all of their time, experience, energy uh, to be able to try and help bootstrap a concept that you've got and are potentially uh, looking for a small percentage of whatever whatever you're going to build, I would so so recommend that you listen to them and take it take advice, but also listen to it and take it seriously because it's much better having to pull a number out of the air fifty percent of something with the right guidance than it is to have a hundred percent of nothing. So I think one of the first indicators would be whether they're prepared to give to give you the time, the time and advice and energy, whether you get a good gut feel from that and whether you know they're not asking any money in it. You've got to try and work out what uh, what's in it for them. And that's a good question to ask the mentor as well. Maybe after you've done a couple of sessions, just say. I, I'm just really curious, but why why are you doing this? What do you get out of this? spiritually, emotionally, or whatever, and listen to their answer, you'll know whether they're a good person and they're doing it for the right reasons. Maybe they they had a good mentor <clears throat> that you know that helped them. And that's the case with my mentor. So he's giving back. And any person that um, I have quite a few mentees that I'm also helping now. And the only thing that I say to them is if this is useful, um, I will hope and expect that you will pass it on. That's it. OK, uh, and then final comment. Well, uh, apart from some thumbs up and so on, final comment from Andrew Joe, which was probably on um, what you can do if you have your trillion dollars. But his comment was learn how to fish. <laughs> but it might have been on something else, but oh, I right. have to That's agree with learn how to fish. I think whilst you're thinking about what you're going to do next, you can learn how to fish. That's cool. We can let you do that for a while. Uh, it was more when they were giving, instead of giving fish to someone, teach him how to fish. Teach him how to fish. That's exactly right. You know, people say, you know, I would, you know, I would spend it, um, you know, I would buy a whole bunch of food and give it to some hungry people or whatever, or I would provoke should you be building a building a machine, and I'm talking metaphorically, but building a machine that will build cash flow to be able to fund the running of a, I don't know, like an orphanage or whatever floats your boat from a philanthropical perspective. But it's not about giving giving money away. It's about creating machines, creating systems that will create cash flow to be able to fund the thing that you want to help. So it's self-sustaining, which goes back exactly what you're talking about, teaching people to fish, not giving them fish pie or McFish burgers. <laughs> Hopefully that helps. Uh, Anke, it's put in another question. If you're still unable to find a mentor who matches your frequency or thinking, are there any resources available to grow leadership skills by yourself? Yeah, so that's that's uh, that's an interesting one. Feel feel free to connect up with me on LinkedIn. I'm very very easy to find. Um, I'm I may have a few ideas for you. I've certainly got more more than enough books to be recommending, and uh, there's a couple of programs that I have pl plugged into over um, over the years, which have been pretty useful for me, and I'm happy to share that information. It, it's it's rarely helped me write Terraform code, 
or <laughs> or cloud formation or anything like that, but it's definitely helped me in life. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just in case you're struggling with that one, Nick, those are actually coding languages. Just for, oh, I, uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. I was just checking. <laughs> yes, yes, I, I, I know those well. Uh, <laughs> Maybe you can teach me, be my mentor. Uh, look, um, let's take that one offline because there was some very interesting stuff that came up just yesterday. But uh, yeah, most people here would find that incredibly boring. Uh, any more questions? It's like the chat has gone quiet. I mean, feel free to take yourself off mute and uh, ask verbally as well. No? Okay. Well, oh, someone had something? No, that was me. That was you? Okay. Uh, well, look, we might wrap this up a little bit early, all of uh, five minutes early which is perfect timing because I actually have to host the next session, uh, which is our wind down chat sessions. Um, this year in the unconference at four o'clock each day, we have a couple of wind down chat sessions. Uh, they're totally fun topics uh, and just come and go to them as you please. And uh, this afternoon we have two wind down chat sessions. I'm hosting one on fishing and we have someone from the diggers club doing one on gardening. So if either of you, if anyone in this group is either a fisher or a gardener, uh, come along to the next session. Uh, I'm sure you will enjoy them. And uh, I hopefully will see a few there. You definitely need to go along to Nick's session. He's going to hopefully be sharing a story about some bears. I'm I do have bear stories and I can share them. Um, Get him to share them. You have to come. Well, you have well. to come to hear the stories, yes. <laughs> thank you very okay. much Look, let's wrap it up there thank you very okay. much Stephen thank you thank you everyone see you at next beer see you later <laughs> bye get yourself bye. a mentor <laughs>